And it's me, Niels, uh, showing you the second video of the process of making a car a bit like the Delta Wing for R-Factor. Last week I... is it a week ago? Not really. Uh, showed you how I made the general dimensions and how my spreadsheet works. And we're gonna do a few more of those things today. And uh, um, might not be the most interesting one, we don't do aero or engines or tires yet, that'll come. Uh, there are some important things left to do. So, without further ado, let's see what we haven't done yet. This is a familiar picture if you saw the previous video, but there's some stuff here that we didn't tackle yet. First of all, you see these boxes. Uh, what are they? Well, the outer box is just based on the dimensions of the car, uh, giving me some sort of an estimate of where the outer limits are and for street cars for example that can be quite useful for inertia calculations as they are somewhat related to the, the outer shape. For a car like a single seater or this delta wing the outer shape using this outer box for inertia is probably a bit extreme because the masses are far more concentrated uh, not too dissimilar to what you see here with the other square rectangular box. So Inertia is quite important in, in, in vehicle dynamics and car handling because it changes the roll rates, uh, the yaw rates and the pitch. Uh, everything is quite related to the inertia. So there is another dimension uh, box here for the inertia box and I can change this size based on what I think is a reasonable approximation of where all the masses are. So it's uh, it's a tool, it's sort of a, an estimate. And nobody really knows exactly what it is until, unless you're the designer and you've measured it properly. But what happens in the end is that inertia uh, has two parts. There is a box like this and things like the tires, the unsprung masses, they are away from the center of gravity here. The crosses the center of gravity and there's a distance so the total inertia is mixed uh, from is made up from the tires and, and brake discs and stuff that's that's also uh, sprung sorry unsprung and the sprung mass which is basically the body the box that you see here and you have to be careful that to add those two up and, and use the correct total value now luckily this being a spreadsheet uh, the inertia from the tires is all calculated and I just have to do an educated guess on what is the inertia of the, the main body of the car. So inertia is important and is a function of the weight of something and the distance to the center of gravity. So let's first see if we can make a reasonable estimate, a first estimate, it won't be perfectly accurate but just an estimate of the unsprung masses on the front and on the rear. Now naturally the front tires are tiny and the front of the car doesn't take much load so it won't have huge uh, brake discs, very huge heavy brake discs or heavy uprights or heavy tires or, or things like that. So here we enter the weights for that. So the front, the spinning mass, the tire and the brake disc it, the number is at 10 kilos here which is basically a random number. But it might not even be hugely wrong um, 25 at the back because it's just a guess I really don't know uh, it would be too boring to figure that out uh, at this point but usually n about 9 kilos for a tire and 9 for a rim and then some of the brake disc yeah so 25 seems fair the front I don't really know 10 is fairly light let's make it half because that's nice and then there's the static, well it's not static, unsprung mass moves, but with this I mean the brake discs and the uprights, sorry the, not the brake discs, the uprights and half of the wishbones and things like that. Quite lightweight on the front, I'll use 4 kilos on the front and 10 on the back is probably, let's double it as well, 8, fairly light, but it's hard to say. So now the, the weights are correct and you can see here, perhaps you already saw it, that there is unsprung these three and when I change the masses so I um, change this 
you see all these numbers change. So my spreadsheet looks at where the masses are and calculates their part in the total inertia, which is quite convenient. And then there's a box, this one here. Well, the one I'm looking at, uh, how this works is uh, we've entered the weight for all the tires and all that stuff, and we enter the total weight. So when you subtract the tires and all those things from the total weight, you've got the weight that is remaining for this box. And we know its dimensions, and then you can calculate the inertia of the box in this case. And then you add those two together, and then there's a, bu a little bug in our vector. It's not really a bug, it's a slight misinterpretation. Uh, so knowing that, I can compensate and then do all sorts of stuff here that I don't even understand. No, that's not entirely true. So at the end, we get physical, in, in the R-Factor physics engine, these inertias for pitch, yaw, and roll. And in order to achieve those, I have to enter these in my HDV file. Do you get it? Probably not. It's very confusing. I still get confused by that almost on a daily basis. So that's important to have that done. And um, inertia, we can probably leave that for what it is. Thanks again for watching. This is a bit of a, a short one. Uh, so you don't fall asleep, which I have fears for. I think this is fairly boring. But then again, YouTube, you never know.